part two of uh, chapter number one, the particulate uh, nature of matter. Uh, in the previous video, we have covered the first three objectives uh, that are in the syllabus, and we will resume uh, with objective number four. So let's start. Uh, objective number four is supplement, and so it's uh, only for extended students. Objective number four is explain the changes of state. Let me get the highlighter just for you guys. Um, Okay, explain the changes of state in terms of the kinetic theory. Okay, so uh, what happens when you heat a solid, when you heat a liquid? You need to know this, um, and you need to really um, like uh, focus on the terminology that we use. So uh, particles, when a solid is heated, the particles uh, get energized and they vibrate fast. Um, and notice here it vibrates because as we said um, in the previous video, uh, sol the movement of the particles in the solid state is vibration. Okay, next, the attractive forces get weakened and some break. And the particles uh, move, uh, notice here, some, okay? The particles move freely and become fairly apart. So it becomes a liquid equal melting. If it becomes a liquid, then this process is known as melting. Okay, why did only some break? Because it's turning into a liquid. And as we said in the previous video, in a liquid, there are uh, weak forces of um, uh, attraction. So not all of them break, only some. And they become fairly apart. As we said, particles in the liquid state are fairly apart. Okay, but if a solid sublimes, and um, sublimes mean it changes to a gas, then all the attractive forces break, all of them, because as we know, there are no attractive forces in a gas, and the particles move fast and freely, and they become far apart. As we said, in a gas state, the particles are far apart. So becomes gas is equal to subli uh, sublimation. Now next, when a solid, uh, when a liquid, I'm sorry, is heated, the particles get energized, they move fast, the attractive forces break down, like all of them, the particles become far apart, and so that's kind of, what, uh, what do you think that is? It becomes a gas, that is vaporization or evaporation, as we said in the uh, previous video, changing from a liquid to a gas is known as vaporization. Okay, now that's an um, that's a really nice thing also to um, have in mind is the heating curve, and the cooling curve. Um, for the heat, uh, first and foremost, uh, when you have any graph, remember to uh, correctly uh, label it. So here we have temperature in degrees Celsius, and we have time in minutes. So as you can see, at room temperature, it was a solid, and at the melting point, which we said it is the temperature at which a solid changes to a liquid. Um, at the melting point, the state was both uh, uh, was both solid and a liquid, and then um, and just a really really important note here is that during change of state, the temperature remains constant. So it remains constant here until it's changed completely to liquid, and then the temperature uh, begins again to rise. Uh, the cooling curve is exactly the opposite of the heating curve. So it was a liquid, and then you're uh, decreasing the temperature. So at a temperature known as the freezing point, which is, by the way, the same as the melting point, uh, just the difference that after the freezing point, uh, the temperature is getting lower and not higher as in the melting point. So at the freezing uh, point, it's the state is both liquid and solid. And then um, after um, it's all changes from liquid to solid, the temperature uh, resumes uh, the decrease. Okay, so I think that was a pretty easy objective uh, to tackle. That was objective number four. Uh, so let's go to um, objective number number five. So objective number five, uh, it is core. It is described qualitatively. It's really important to notice here qualitatively. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Qualitatively is the opposite of quantitative. Qualitatively means you need to describe and write down um, an explanation for the pressure and temperature of a gas in terms of the motion. In terms of the motion. It's really important to notice that. It is in terms of the motion. So when it comes to temperature, let's first start. What is meant by temperature? Uh, like the temperature um, implies what? The temperature of a substance is this sign here implies directly it implies here directly uh, proportional 
So the temperature of a substance is directly proportional to the kinetic energy of the molecules. So if the temperature of the gas increases, the particles will have more energy and will move around faster. So move around faster. This means the more the temperature, the faster is the motion of the particles of the gas. Now let's go to the pressure. Um, I know there is much text, but, but as I said, it's uh, the objective is you need to be able to describe it qualitatively. So pressure. The gas molecules are in a state of a continuous motion in all directions, and they're constantly bombarding the walls of a container, as we know from the previous video. Now, when the molecules bounce off the walls of the, the, walls of the container, they produce an outward force on the walls which cause the outward pressure. So that's the pressure. When they bounce off the walls of the container, they kind of create this pressure. Um, so that causes the outward pressure of the gas on the walls of the container. At a constant temperature, because now we're studying the pressure, the gas molecules move at a constant average speed, so the force of collision is um, on average the same. But what if the temperature is constant, but you compress the gas into a smaller volume? Okay, so you compress it into a smaller volume. There will be more frequent collisions on each unit of area. So the total force per unit area increases. Total force per unit area is basically pressure. As you know from the definition of pressure uh, from physics or any other science, uh, science subject. Okay, so the, the total force per unit area increases and the pressure increases. But if a gas expands to a greater volume at a constant temperature, there are less frequent collisions on each unit of area and the pressure decreases. So that means when the pressure is high, there is more collisions and hence uh, more uh, the particles, the gas particles uh, move faster. If the pressure is less, it means less collisions and it means uh, gas particles move slower. So I, um, I hope that was explained well. And now we'll go to objective number six of chapter number one. It is also core. Um, the objective states um, show an understanding of the random motion of particles in a suspension. You need to know that um, particles in suspension have a random motion. It is sometimes known as Brownian motion. And show that it is an evidence for the kinetic particle uh, model of matter. So let's uh, first start off by what is meant by suspension. So a suspension is a mixture between two substances one of which is finely divided and dispersed in the other. Common suspensions include sand and water, uh, dust and air, and, um, oil, and uh, oil droplets and water, for example. So here is a diagram of, um, of a suspension, as you can see. Uh, these are really uh, small particles uh, of oil, maybe, that are dispersed um, in water. Okay, so particles when suspended in a fluid exhibit a haphazard movement uh, and this is known as Brownian motion. Um, here is uh, Robert Brown who uh, first discovered Brownian motion and uh, this is a picture of him. Okay so how can, um, uh, what does, we said that the Brownian motion is an evidence for the kinetic theory of matter. What is the kinetic theory of matter? According to the kinetic theory of matter Molecules at a temperature not equal zero possesses kinetic energy, which results in them moving in random motion. So according to the kinetic theory, particles, because they possess energy, they move. And because they move, they hit the particles around them, and they result also in the particles moving around them to move in random motion as well. So this has been demonstrated by the Brownian motion because the Brownian motion states that particles that are suspended in a fluid exhibit a haphazard movement. So um, uh, we're done with objective number um, six. I think I can do one more objective in this video and that is objective number seven. It's a supplement um, that is only for the extended students. I think it's kind of uh, similar uh, to objective number um, to objective number six, very similar actually. 
uh, but let's go through it, it won't take a minute. Uh, describe and explain Brown in motion in terms of random molecular bombardment. So the stress here is on the fact that it's random, um, it is random molecular bombardment. So uh, Brown in motion is a zigzag, that's the first, irregular, random, motion exhibited by minute particles in both liquids and gases which by the way are collectively known as fluids they do this as as just i said a few moments ago because they are bombarded it's really important to stress this by other moving particles in the fluid so the large particles for instance can be moved by the la uh, light fast moving molecules around them and here's a diagram of a brown in motion. That's a basic diagram. It shows the zigzag movements, as you can see, random, irregular. Okay, so I think uh, that will be the end of uh, this part two of chapter number one. So we have completed objective number four, five, uh, six, and seven. In the next video, we will be uh, discussing objective number eight, nine, and ten. Um, and as I said, if you have any question, uh, just um, leave it below in the comment section and I'll try to answer you or maybe another student will help out. Thank you for watching and uh, see you in the um, next video.